mat. You have nowhere else to be but here right now. Lift your head back up to center and start to lift through your heart, coming through a little bit of the back of your gentle arch in the spine. Routing through your spine and drawing your navel in, so some seated cat and cow to warm us up. Inhale, find length as you lift through sternum. And exhale, round your spine. And do that a few more times with your own connection of breath. Maybe noticing any areas of tension, whether it's physical tension or emotional tension. Directing your breath to those spaces. And as you lift your heart, be nice and proud here. So lift through that chest and as you round, maybe close off, allow everything to hollow, get a little smouchy, and then start to come back to that proudness. So do it a few times, closing off and then opening up again. And that reminder of giving ourselves permission to have those days where we're just not feeling 100%. But also that reminder to encourage ourselves, encourage ourselves to practice self care to get out of bed. I was joking yesterday, maybe even to shower regularly, even if you're not seeing anyone. Do something that makes you feel good for you. As you come back to a seated posture, right hand to the outside of that hip, find length through the left side of the body. And bring your engagement to your core, lift yourself back up, and then lean towards the other side. Do that a few times, connecting with breath. So inhaling as you lift to center, maybe an exhale as you dip to one side or whatever feels more fluid. Really opening up to the side of the body, especially if this is your first stretch of the day. And if you find that you're compressed while you're sleeping, or if you're like me, you sleep on one side and then wonder why one side is a little tighter than the other. So find a bit more depth now as you lean to one side and then bend to that elbow where the hand is connecting to the earth. So bring yourself a little closer to your mat and then do that a few more times from side to side. And again, instead of pressing off with the hand, you are lifting up with the core. Once you've completed both sides, come back to center, take your arms out of front, palms face down, roll your shoulders back. Open up, lift through your heart, look up. Exhale, scoop that crown back to center that you're making a big circle or a hug. Inhale, lift, lift your heart, and exhale, scooping it back. Two more times with that, inhale, and exhale, and one more, inhale, and exhale. If it's part of your practice, interlace your hands beneath the lower back or take your hands on the lower spine. You're interlacing your hands, press them to the earth, and then lift through your heart. Look up. Maybe slightly lift them off the lower back, or hands are blue, keep rolling the shoulders back. Fine length through the front of the neck. Allow your exhale to come through the mouth. And as you lift sternum to center, bow all the way forward, leading with your chest. And then start to walk your arms out in front. Drop the head down between the biceps. If it feels good, rock the head side to side a little more. Two 
And let's walk the hands back towards front of the body. Bring both hands to Anjali Mudra prayer and reconnect with your intention. Maybe close the eyes, no external distractions. Let's have a beautiful practice this morning. Big inhale, reach your arms up. Exhale, hands to heart. Knees in tabletop form. And then from the table, you're gonna find your first downward facing dog. Hands on your shoulders, knees flip distance apart. Tuck your toes and lift the hips up to downward facing dog. Start to pedal through your feet, walk your dog. And if downward dog is a little challenging for you, you can always stay in a tabletop and move through a couple more rounds of cat and cow if you prefer. This is your own private practice. So do what feels best for you in the comfort of your home. Beautiful. So if you've chosen down dog today to warm up the body, Bring your focus to your palms, so press through the base of the palms and spread through your fingers. Make sure that the fingertips are facing the top of your mat. And really put emphasis on that L shape, so that thumb and that index. It's going to be your place where you want to glue that hand to earth. In your downward dog, maybe start to play with bending into one knee and rooting the opposite heel, working to those hamstrings. And then with an exhale, switching legs. And if you're finding those hamstrings are tight this morning, maybe get a few times from side to side. Not going to the full extension, just listening to your body. If there's any tightness or tension, know to pull back a bit. And then let's neutralize through the legs and come up onto the tiptoes, bend into your knees, and slowly walk up to the top of your mat. Inhale, find length, hands to your shins. Halfway lift, and then exhale, forward fold. And allow your head to drop down. Rock your head a little now from side to side. And then bring the hands to the back of the calves. Inhale, find length, press the hands into calves. Press the sit bones back to the edge of the mat. Exhale. Forward fold and drop the head down. One more time. Inhale, find your leg. And exhale, forward fold. Plant the hands and then step back with the right foot into runner's lunge. And slightly rotate your back and forward. Lower the knee down, untuck your toes, and lift up to your modified lunge. Arms can extend if you have shoulder injury or any tension. Take your arms to practice or goddess or to prayer. Be mindful of your knee, but find length now. So think about tucking pubic bone towards your chin, find length from your tailbone up, as long as there's no pinching that back knee. And then soften, sits a little further into those hips or sit bones. <laughs> Bring the hands down to frame your front foot. And slowly send your hips back and start to lift the front toes off. So still playing with that hamstring connection. So not fully extending the leg, micro bending your knee. Two breaths here. Just see what that left side is speaking about today. And then bring that sole foot back, plant the hands, tap your toes, lift that back knee. And let's scoop left leg back to a three leg dog. If it feels good, keep it lifted. Maybe stack the hips and then look underneath your left armpit. Flexion to your top foot. Feel that big hip opener option to lower that back right knee down if you need to. Square your hip up to center and then lower that foot down. Come forward into a plank. Lower your knees to table. We'll do a modified flow. Untuck your toes. Lead with your heart. Chaturanga. Lift for your heart. Baby cobra. Mindful of that lower back. So maybe it's actually going to be sphinx this morning. And then press yourself back to table to lie back to down facing dog. Take three breaths in your down dog. Then into both knees, right foot steps forward, rotate back, left hip forward. 
Lower your left knee down this time. Untuck your toes, come into that crescent lunge again, modified lunge. Find length through the upper body, decide where your arms are gonna be, cactus or overhead, and then draw your navel in. Find length down from tailbone to crown. You should start to feel that back quad nice and long. Make sure there's no pinching in your knee. You can always lift the knee or double up on your mat. Sink a little further, weight into that front leg. Take one more breath here. Lower the hands down, tuck your toes, lift the knee. Right foot sweeps back, three-legged dog. Keep it lifted. Stacking the hips, look underneath right armpit this time. Keep rooting through those palms. That's why we practice in our downward dog as we start today. Square your hip up to center and lower the foot. Modify flow. Come forward into plank. Feel that core engage. Lower your knees. Untuck your toes, chakra run. Lift through your heart, baby cobra. Your choice to press back to tabletop child or back to downward facing dog. Three breaths in down dog. Or your rest pose of choice. Bend into both knees or during table, everyone's gonna step up to the top of the mat. Work pull. Inhale, find length. Exhale, forward fold. Go all the way up to mountain pose. Inhale, arms up, look up. Exhale, hands to heart. Inhale, arms up. Add a little back bend, lift your heart, arch in the spine if you're ready for it. If not, just stay at mountain. Exhale, swan back. Halfway lift, hands to shins. Exhale, forward fold. Step back to a plank. Bring your weight over top of your wrist. Full vinyasa this time. Chaturanga Navasana. Lift up to baby cobra. Try not to go to full expression yet. Tuck your toes and glide back down dog. <sighs> Lift your left leg up. Step your left foot through to the top of your mat. You can always transition by lowering that knee down and stepping up on the table. Lift that back knee, bend in that knee. Come into full crescent lunge this time. Same form we do in that modified crescent. Knee above your ankles, sink into it. Take your hands to hips. Roll the shoulders back. And then think about that navel drawing in again. Find your focal point, your drishti. So spot ahead. Two more reps here. Maybe sink a little lower. And then bring your hands down to frame your foot. See if you can sweep the back again to three like a dog. If it felt good, stack the hip again, come to that front knee, root your right heel to the floor. So you're still finding length in the back of the center. Flexion through that extended leg. Squaring your hip up, lower that foot down. Lift your right leg up and step through to the top of the mat. And then option transition from table, bend into your back knee, lift up, crescent lunge, and then sink into it again. Knee stays above ankle, make sure you can still see your big toe. Bring your hands to hips, roll the shoulders back, and then sit into it. Navel draws in. Two more breaths. Then bring the hands back down and bring your foot. Let's step it back to be like a dog. Stack the hip. Flexion through that top foot, root through your left heel. Let's square the hip to center, lower the foot, full vinyasa, forward into plank, chaturanga. Maybe lift through full cobra if your lower back is ready. Be mindful, today might not be that day. And then press back to the last one of the child's pose.
And let's find our way back into tabletop. From table, step up to the top of the mat. Forward fold. Inhale, find a leg. <sighs> Exhale, forward fold. Then roll all the way to standing. Inhale, arms up, look up. On your exhale, bring your hands to prayer. <sighs> Inhale, arms up. Lift your heart, gentle back bend. So we're gonna start A. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, find length. And exhale. Hop, step, or maybe <laughs> walk it back to plank. Your choice. Bring your weight over top of your wrist. Find your chaturanga, your expression on it. Untuck your toes. Lift your heart. Roll the shoulders back. Glide back to down facing dog. And then to knees, hop, step, or walk up to top your mat, forward fold. Inhale, half and lift. Exhale, forward fold. And roll all the way back. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, hands to heart. One more time, like back. Inhale. Lift your heart, gentle back up. Exhale. Swan dive forward. Half and lift on Uttanasana. Exhale, forward fold into Uttanasana. Practice your transitions. If you're hopping, try to do it quietly. Mm, I could have been a little quieter than that. Chaturanga. Lift up to Cobra or Up Dog. Glide back to Down Facing Dog. So in your Down Dog, if you find that you're losing that grip, maybe take your feet wider and press to your heels or step your feet closer to your wrists. Internally rotate so the inner creases of the elbows are nearing each other. Press through the base of the palms. Let's take one more breath here. Try to root through your heels. And then to your knees, find your own transition to the hop or to the top of your mat if you're hopping, stepping, or walking. Inhale, find length. Exhale, forward fold. And roll all the way up. Inhale, arms up. And exhale, our hands to heart. Let's add that crescent flow back in. Inhale. Gentle back bend. Exhale. Forward fold. Inhale, find length. And exhale, forward fold. Right foot steps back. Bend into your back knee. Lift up to full crescent. Find that edge. Lean forward. Look to the top edge and take your arms out to airplane. Press back through your palms. Knee above your ankle. Make sure you're not rolling that hip back. It just keeps working to the top corner. Find that edge, sink into it. Use your ujjayi breath. Two more breaths, keep lifting to your heart. And then bring the hands down. Sweep the left leg back. Three legged dog, keep it lifted, or maybe stack the hip again for that puppy peeing. Nice big, keep going good today. Square the hip back up. Move through your vinyasa, forward into plank. Chaturanga Dandasana, lifting up through cobra, or maybe you're going to up dog, tucking the toes, lifting the knees, or untucking the toes, <laughs> pressing the tops of the feet in. Glide back to down dog. Lift your right leg up and step it through to the top of your mat. Bend into your back knee, lift up to crescent again, sink into it. Lean forward, open up the arms. Find that edge again, shoulders roll back, palms press back. Try not to lose that core connection, so we're drawing that navel into lower back. Find your trishti again. Spot on the floor this time, so not as tall. Two more breaths, or maybe your side of the mouth. Bring the hands down, frame your foot. Right foot steps back. Three-legged dog. Stack the hip again, puppy peeing. Flexion through that foot. Let's 
Square your hip up. Finish with your vinyasa. Forward into plank. Chaturanga. Lift up through your upper facing pose. And then meet back and down facing up. Find your way to the top of your mat. Inhale, find line. Exhale, forward fold. Walk your hands up the front of your body. Help lift you up. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, hands to heart. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, swan dive. So eliminate that back bend. Inhale, find line. Exhale, forward fold. Right foot steps back again. Bend and chain. Lift up, crescent. You know this now. Take your hands to the lower spine. Lift through your heart. Lean forward. Look to your big toe. Find a bit more of your edge. Get tall on your back heel. Trust that front leg. Put your weight into it. If it needs lowering the back, knee down. Listen to your body. Find that place that you get a little uncomfortable. That place where you can also start to trust. Trust your practice. Before you want to come out of this, bend into your back knee, release the hands, scoop up to crescent, fine line through that front leg. Exhale, hands to curve, bend into your knee. Maybe dip that back knee down. Inhale. Fine line. Exhale. One more like that. Inhale, find that leg. And exhale. Pivot on your back foot, your dress in a B. Back foot's aligned with the short edge of your mat, and front heel's lying back arch. Arms extend. Flip that palm, an exalted warrior. Lift back to center, take your hands to the lower spine, lift through your heart as you interlace hands. Pivot your chest, come through a humble warrior, look to that big toe. So chest might be resting on front of thigh. Stay low here, release the hands, pivot on your back toe, or back heel, lift the heel, right hand plants, left arm reaches for a nice twist. So in that closure of the twist, find length of the tips of fingers. Maybe deepen your twist, head and small the back, and then find length to crack. Your choice here to transition back to full plank or maybe side plank. Working on that. If you're coming side plank, pivot on your back, right heel, so you come onto the edge of the foot, step yourself back, left foot steps back, or come to full plank. Lift through that top hip. Knee back in center plank, chaturanga. Lifting up through to cobra. Rest at child's knees. You get a rest because I have to remember everything I did on the other side. In your child's pose, walk your hands to the right edge of your mat, and then send your left hip over towards the left side of the mat. Bring your head back down to your arms. Let's walk the hands all the way towards the other side. Find line to the right side as you kick that hip towards the right edge. And let's walk ourselves back, center, and roll up through the table, tuck your toes, lift up to down dog, and then make your way back to the top of your mat. Inhale, hop and lift. And exhale, forward fold. Press your heels as you bend your knees. And rounding all the way, stretch them. Inhale, scoop the arms and look up. And exhale, hands to heart. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, swan neck. Halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Left foot steps back. Bend inside knee, lift up to crescent. 
Interlace your hands beneath the lower back again. Lift through your heart. Lean forward. Lean into that front leg. Find height in the back of the heel. Back to that connection, trusting the strength of your front quad. Find that edge to the two more reps here. Bend to your back knee, lift yourself up, inhale, arms up. Exhale, transition to your dress knee. Back foot to line, short edge to the back. Front heel line with the back arch. Arms extend, flip the palm. <sighs> Come into your exalted warrior. I should feel like a rest. Find length through the side of the body, but also dropping that shoulder away from you. Lift through your jasna. Exhale, hands to fall back. Lift your heart, pivot your chest, and look towards that front big toe. Humble warrior. Weight into your front leg. Let's lower the hands down. Pivot on your back heel. Left hand sweeps the right, right arm reaches up. Find length again through fingertips, decided to bring that hand small to back, deepening your twist. If you're transitioning to side plank, reach your right arm up, pivot on your back foot, make space to step that leg back, or step back to full plank, hold for two breaths. Finish with your vinyasa, come forward as plank, chatter on that. Lift up to upper facing pose of choice. And then press back the last Allow your hands to weave through the front of the body to keep your wrist. All right, let's roll out a bit. If you need to rest longer, honor that. Step up to the top of your mat, toward fold. If you have a block handy, place it at the top of your mat, a bit of space between the top edge. Inhale, find length. Exhale, forward fold. Roll up to standing again. Inhale, arms up. Interlace your hands to Kali Mudra, so index fingers together. Relax your shoulders away from your ears, find length towards that right side. Core is on inhale, lift to center, sit back to chair, take your arms out in front. Draw your navel in, tuck that pubic bone to chin again. Sit a little lower with the kasana. Inhale, find leg, baby, out of that back bend. Lift your heart, bring your gaze to your fingers. <sighs> Lift it back to center. Last shoulder, lean towards the other side. <sighs> Inhale, lift back. Exhale, sit to the Kasana chair. Space between your knees and your thighs. Make them nice and active like you're squeezing that yoga block. If you're lucky I didn't make you actually have the yoga block there. It's pretty handy. Sit a little lower. And then exhale. Come out of it. Inhale, fine length. Exhale, forward fold. Right foot steps back. Then it's that knee. Lift up to crescent. Take your hands to lower spine. Lean forward again. We're adding on to that flow that we just did. Bend into your back knee. Inhale, lift up to center. Exhale, pivot on your back foot. And I realize I just forgot the right side. <laughs> we'll have to do that after that. Inhale, exhale. Take your arms out in front. And then reach up to the Delta Warrior. Inhale, lift back. Hands to lower spine. 
Pivot with your chest, look to that big toe. Come back into humble. Weight into your front thigh, bend into your knee. Now can you lift your back heel off of your lunge, bend into that knee, and lift up to your dressing seat. Hands can lift off of the spine, or if here's where your block can come into handy, bring your hands to your block, take a variation of needle, keep working that hip to its top corner. If you want to challenge yourself, maybe you're going to reach that block out in front, still flexing through that back foot. I say that, I don't know why I did that today to myself. Take one more breath in your balance. Lower yourself down, plant the hands, sweep that left leg back to three leg dog. Practice your flow from one leg dog. So forward into plank, chaturanga, chin to floor in the sun rock. Lift up through to cobra. <sighs> Glide back to downward facing dog. Bring your feet side by side and then lift your right leg, step it to the top of your mat. Bend into your back knee, inhale, lift to crescent. Find length, exhale, hands to prayer. This is the part I forgot on the other side. Inhale, exhale. One more time, inhale, and exhale. Bring your hands to frame your foot, step up to the top of your mat. Inhale, halfway lift. It didn't feel as bad when it wasn't added to all that sequence, eh? Exhale, forward fold. Find your chair again, heel toe the feet, sit the glutes back. Reach your arms up to put the custom on chair. Maybe come up on tiptoes and lift. All the way up standing. Exhale, hands to heart. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, forward fold. Halfway lift. And exhale, fold. Left foot steps back. Bend inside knee. Lift up to crescent. Sinking into it. And then interlace your hands, lift your heart, lean a little forward. Testing that, weight again. Lift back, center, bend into your back knee, find your way to warrior B. Flip the palm into exalted. Inhale, lift back through center. And then exhale, take your hands to the small of the back, lift your heart, pit your chest, come into that humble warrior. Find that edge again, stick into that front leg. Knee stays above ankle, pivot on your back heel. Transfer your weight forward, come into your drasana seat. So if the hands lifted is too much, you can bring them to lower back. Hips are staying square. Your choice to bring the hands to that block, or maybe you're lifting the block. Core on, flexion through back foot. All these little things in your balance. Two more breaths. All right, lower down, frame your foot, and then step that back foot down, right foot sweeps back, keep it lifted. Forward into plank, chaturanga, chin to floor, come through sunga, lift up through cobra, press back to chest. <sighs> Hoping everyone is still with me. All right, we are going to meet back in table and transition to half pigeon. Slide your right knee to the inside of right wrist. Heel is above your groin. Leg to the back of your left leg. Maybe tuck the toes and lift the knee. If this is not part of your practice, you can always come onto your spine for figure four, and I'll demo that in one second. If you're going to stay in half pigeon, bend your back knee and see if you can practice king pigeon working the back of the body. Right arm is going to reach around and grab a hold of that left leg. And you're going to find height in the front of your body. Use the fingertips to help you lift you up and hold. That's not part of your practice. 
Come onto your spine, ankle crosses over thigh. Interlace the hands behind your thigh, come and just thread the needle or your figure four. Flexion through both feet. If you're still holding your king pigeon here, maybe see if you can start to lift that front arm or bring the hand to the thigh, get a little taller. And then let's find expression for our pigeon. So release the back of that leg. Send your back left to core more. Meeting with the heart and arms stacking with this. Bring the forehead down. Maybe you're extending the arms in front, or if you have blocks, maybe you want to work on chest today and bring your hands to top of your blocks and have a bit more grip here. So find your expression of your equal padakanasana and lower half the key. Let's take one more breath here. You want to press yourself back up. If you're more fine pigeon, you can stay there. And press yourself through to table. Maybe start to rotate a few times through that hip. Or maybe start to lengthen the variation of your bird dog, whatever you feel like you need to do to release that. Transition to the other side. So left knee to the inside of left wrist. Heel up right, tuck the toes of the back foot, lengthen that leg and then slightly heel toe that foot. All the way back, untuck your toes. Right hip's gonna press forward, bend into your back knee, thank you. And then see if you can reach around. Yes, I need a hug, thank you. And grab a hold of the foot with the left hand. Your breath is disgusting a lot. Okay, get up here. Again, you can come onto your spine for recline pigeon or figure four. Whose dog just comes up and gives them a hug? Oh my gosh, I trained her so well. Okay, and then if you want to come into that full expression, hand the top of that front thigh. Maybe arm extends out or stays on the ground or on that front thigh. And when you are ready, release that bind. Keep making sure that connection, the back hip, is making its way to the top corner. Lead with the heart. And then you find your way and settle in to your expression. Again, maybe it's incorporating upper body. I'm going to take my blocks wider this time and bend to my elbows.
And if your mind has wandered, make sure you continue to couch your breaths. Let's make our way back upright. Again, you can stand your spine if you like. You get the four. Shake out that leg from your table. If you're in figure four, you can always take your legs up towards the sky. You put it up. It feels good. Again, press that heel coming into bird dog. If you want to stand your spine, stay there. Otherwise, we will come to seated. We did a couple of twists today, so if you find that your body does not want to do any more closed twists, you can join for an open twist. I'm going to close, sorry, I'm going to cue the closed twist first. Bringing right knee into your chest from your stop pose. Step the right foot over your left. You can take that extended leg and bring that heel towards your glute or keep the leg long. Twisting in the direction of your knee if you're closing the twist, work on more of the SI. And if you find that the SI is locking up, then you're going to open up and go the other way instead. So we're coming for that close twist. Inhale, arms up. Right arm comes back. So whatever corresponding knee is. So right knee is up, right arm comes back. And the opposite arm hugs that thigh in the chest. Find arm through your spine. And if you've chosen the open twist going in the other direction, then make sure that you're finding length and spine and space between shoulders. If you need more from this closed twist, maybe start to hook your elbow and press your elbow into your thigh. Can everyone still see me? Give me a thumbs up. Okay, cool. It just something popped up. Thank you. So much for recording. <laughs> Take two more breaths. Coming out of your twist, keep your bottom leg extended and uncross the top leg. Let's come into a forward fold. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, forward fold. And then rolling all the way back to see the staff pose left side. So left knee to chest, stepping that foot over, right heel to glute or keep the leg long, fine. <laughs> Your length through your spine again, closing the twist, so twisting in the direction that knee to the left, left arm to the back of your mat, right arm hugs or open twist, opposite direction and pressing that arm into the leg, whatever's available, maybe calf, maybe knee, maybe inner thigh. Nice, sticky practice today, <laughs> at least for me. I'll talk for myself. Deepen your twist, maybe hooking the elbow or staying where you're at. And then coming out of that twist across the legs, lengthen, inhale, arms up, and exhale. Pat to show the muscle and forward fold. And as you roll out of it, we will finish with Navasana, our boat pose. Bringing heels into the floor. If you are using yoga box, you can place one between the inner thighs. One can be overhead like we did in our warrior seat today. Walk your heels into your glutes. Sit bones in the mat and then find length against your spine. Sternum lift, shoulders roll back. Option to keep the heels down. Option to bring the hands behind the thighs or option to lift the arms overhead. And let's, let's hold for four. So squeeze the inner thighs. If you're not using the yoga block, there's still space between the legs. Two 
Take one more breath. You're gonna slowly lower the heels back down. Remove blocks if you're using them. And find your way into your canoe this time. Heels are connected, arms are extended, chest lifts. Core is drawn in, lower down for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Interlace your hands, find a full body stretch here, point through your toes. Maybe slightly start to arch your back, coming to variation of fish pose. If you do want to finish with a full expression of fish, keep pointing your toes. Lower your hands down to the outside of your hips or bring your palms face down underneath your glutes. Tuck your elbows under, start to lift your sternum, roll shoulders back. Head can stay on the mat or you can start to slightly lift. Keep pointing your toes. If your head is lifted, slowly lower it back down. Come off the palms. Bring knees to chest, sacrum massage. And if you wish to finish with any final postures, whether it's shoulder stance, or happy baby, maybe you want to come through some core, maybe bicycles, feel free to take a few moments on your mat to do so. I'm not going to cue anything at this portion because maybe the cue needs to be to rest right now. I know for me in my practice, there are sometimes postures that I wish to take for myself without disrupting the class or without giving attention. So again, honor that you're in your own space, you're in the comfort of your home. So take a few moments here before you settle in so that you don't have to put more on that to-do list for after Shavasana. So take a couple more breaths if you like. Whenever you feel ready to settle in, come into your final posture. Maybe it's going to be legs long, arms open up. Maybe it's going to be feet planted today. Start to close your eyes if you're not already there. Coming into Shavasana. And honoring this time of rest. Being proud of your work. How do you practice?
Think. Still, if you need to stay here longer. And if you are ready to move, maybe rock the head. Well, no, from side to side, if you're on your spine. Be gentle and slow as you reawaken to your space. Maybe it's a little wiggle of the fingers or wiggles of the toes. And connecting with your mat by rolling onto one side, hugging your knees a little closer to your chest. And saying thank you to yourself. Let's slowly meet up uh, seated if you're joining me in practice. And you can bring hand to heart, hand to belly, connecting back with your intention. Maybe reaffirming it a few times in your mind. Palms together to Anja Chakra for intuition. Through our mouth and our throat for Shudra for speaking our truth. And to our hearts, Anahasa, for community and connection. Thank you to everyone for tuning in, being part of this space. <laughs> for the love of your heart. I can't even say it properly. Thanks everyone for joining us and namaste. Hi, oh, hi, Ella. Namaste. Namaste. You know that's part of your so well. <laughs>